Markel Beltrami has given musical life to some of the most exciting films of the past decade, including Scream, Mimic, Hellboy, Terminator 3, Live Free or Die Hard, and the three burials of Milquiades Estrada. He's been nominated for an Emmy, a Critics' Choice Award, and won six ASCAP awards. And he's just received his first Academy Award nomination for his astounding score to James Mangold's 310 to Yuma. It is a tremendous pleasure to welcome a brilliant musician and film composer to Movie Geeks United, Mr. Marco Beltrami. Marco, are you with us? I'm here. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me. We're really excited to speak with you. This has to be uh, a great time for you. Uh, you're, you're, you're days away from the Oscars. Are, are, are you feeling nervous? Uh, what, what's going on in your, in your, uh, in your mind right now? Um... The biggest thing for me was that my wife went away with one of our kids, so I was sort of babysitting for five days, and that was took precedence over any nervousness from uh, <laughs> from uh, the Oscars, the looming Oscars. But um, I'm sure, you know, on Sunday I'll I'll uh, I'll have a little pit in my stomach. Yeah, it would it would have to be just a, an exhilarating kind of experience. But did, did you attend the um, the nominees' luncheon? Oh yeah, that was great. That was a lot of fun. You get to meet everybody, and it's uh, it's really low key. It's uh, uh, it was a nice time. This one, I'm, I'm always wondered if there's a, a certain camaraderie among film composers. If you if you stay in touch with some of your your colleagues and stay on top of what they're doing. Well, um, I think as a as a whole, film composers are pretty much uh, solitary creatures. You know, we um, pretty much work in dark rooms by ourselves most of the time, um, and there's a certain level of, I guess, competitiveness or whatever. But um, I, uh, I I met three of the other candidates uh, there at the luncheon that um, I hadn't met before: Michael Giacchino, James Newton Howard, um, actually two, yeah, and and uh, they were both really nice. And um, you know, I wish there was more of a, a spirit of of, um, of working together and, and unification among us. And I know they're trying somewhat. Like the Society of Composers and Lyricists and all, uh, which is good, but um, but pretty much we you know we're we, we're on our own. Well, and plus you stay so busy too. I mean, you're composing multiple movies every year, and that's got to be a breakneck schedule to yeah to to, yeah, to fit camaraderie of any sort in. So uh, yeah. did I read some? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was I was I just agreeing with you. Yeah, it's it's. Um, it is, you know, when it gets busy, it's hard to do anything but just focus on the project that you're working on. Uh, but it is nice to hear that, uh, that from other composers that sort of share the same, you know, and being in the trenches, the same stuff that you do, and and uh, have someone that can relate to you. It's uh, it's, it's nice to meet with other composers. Yeah, I bet. I, I read that you were an apprentice to uh, uh, to Morricone for for three years. Is that correct? No, I um, uh, he. Yeah, for some reason there's all kinds of misinformation floating around. But um, uh, no, he he came over to to the United States um, to get a ASCAP award. Um, boy, I don't know, a, a while ago, and um, I I picked him up at the airport and took him around for a, you know it was a, over a couple of days. But um, but no, no, I never studied with him at all. Okay, okay. I think it was an interview I, I saw with Tommy Lee Jones. I, I think I, I must have been mistaken uh, where he was yeah. discussing that. But uh, it was, well, was Tommy Lee. There's an interview that I'm making with uh, <laughs> that I did with Tommy Lee Jones, and he's because he he's not he's, he wasn't really a fan of Morricone's, um, uh, um, at, at least for in reference to his movie that we were working on, the um, Three Burials, Melky Yeah. Strata, and he always seemed to hear like little Morricone references, and so he he said. Something in an interview that we that um, that is probably the thing that you saw where um, he sort of makes fun that you know and he says and you studied with uh, Morricone for whatever <laughs> but uh, but it, he was doing that mainly as a dig at me that was oh. an inside joke okay yeah yeah uh, but uh, but was Goldsmith one of your teachers is that correct yeah, Goldsmith was yeah Jerry was, okay he was great yeah when I when I uh, came to um, to California there was a program at USC and he was. Uh, mentoring it that year and um uh so i you know it was great it was had the opportunity to stay with him for a year 
Now, did you know, did you know that you wanted to focus on film composition at that time? I, I know you're, you're you're a musician. I'm wondering how that how that decision comes about from being a musician to focusing on film composition. Well, it was for me. It was really a matter of practicality. I mean, I got a master's degree from Yale School of Music, and then I uh, I was thinking, what do I want to do? I either teach um, or you do something commercial. And teaching for me, I, I just felt like to just go through the system and then so that you can be sped out and teach, it seems kind of crazy. Like, what, what do you have to say, you know? Right. So um, I knew I wanted to do something commercial, but I really knew very little about film scoring. And uh, I applied. I heard about this program out at um, USC, and I applied to it and um, was fortunate to, to get accepted. And then I decided to come out here. And that's really when I learned about film scoring. I knew nothing about it. I, You know, I had a job working for... Uh, Chris Young um, as mm. like a coffee boy for him for uh, a little while, and then I ended up doing some uh, orchestration for him and, um, uh, and various tasks. And and uh, you know from from there I started getting some stuff on my own. Mm. Well, I, I know that I read an interview with you uh, t- taken several years back, and and and, and the, the question was. Is there something that you're yearning to do, some kind of project? And you said, I, I would love to do a Western. Right. So right. I, I would imagine 310 Yuma falling on your lap. How to, had it been a dream come true? Uh, it was great. I mean, when I, um, when I heard about Jim making this movie, uh, I heard about it long before I was hired. And, um, you know, I was – I had no idea what their choice was for music, but I, I – I had met him before, and I had I had known Kathy, his wife Kathy Conrad, since uh, mm-hmm. she was one of the producers on the Scream movies that I had worked on, and yeah. um, so I wrote her a letter and and uh, mentioned how much I'd want to work on it, and uh, you know it turned out they had a lot of attempt with music that I had written for um, Tommy Lee Jones's movie, and and it just sort of worked out, and I was really happy because you know I'm a I'm a huge fan of the uh, the old spaghetti western scores, and um, uh, uh, you know it was just a great opportunity to do like sort of cool homage to it. Yeah, and at the same time, um, and and your three burial scores just like this as well. It's familiar. Uh, you know that you're you're dealing with western themes here. It sounds familiar, but there's something so unique and and, and different about it. At the same time, it's kind of real different bent to it. And, and and coming from someone like me that doesn't think musically, what what is that different spin you you put on the Western theme there with uh, with three ten? Well, I don't know. I think the the thing is the, the thing I like about Morcone is not you know it's not a question of you know pastiching something he did or just copying his style or something. I, what I like about what he did is how he um, would approach music. He would take all these diverse sounds that aren't necessarily orchestral, um, but he would combine them together and then use them in a novel way, you know, whether it's uh, a, talk, a, a clock ticking or, you know, the reverb banging on an amp or whatever it happens to right. be, or someone whistling, and and uh, make this sort of patchwork of things. And, and that's, that's sort of how I approached uh, 310 to Yuma, and that's where I, I, I think there's similarity in, in approach um, and then you know in terms of the specifics it was you know every every instrument that I used in 310 Yuma was something that could have been around in the period of the of the movie mm. um, they were they were all you know from the tack piano to the pump organ to they were all things that were around in the 19th century and then it was just my my thing compositionally was to try to make it to modernize it you know, with um, the help of uh, the guy I work with, Buck Sanders, we've been working together for about 10 years. Uh, and he's really good with the computer stuff. We um, manipulated all the sounds and made it more modern. It's a beautiful, I mean, it's gorgeous work. Um, but in terms of how early in, in the process uh, do you like to be involved? Are, are you generally brought on from from the beginning or, or towards uh, the end? It's different. On this, I was... I was brought in sort of towards the end where they almost had a complete locked picture. And um, I had about six weeks. I could have used a little bit more time for it, mm. but um, that's about 
average, I guess, six to eight weeks for for a project. Um, sometimes I get brought in earlier, but if it's too early, you can sort of get sidetracked because you don't want to work from a script or even an incomplete picture because um, it's easy to get thrown off on a tangent. And, yeah. And and you know it's so important, especially in a movie like this. I mean, just every nuance of the actors and like you know Russell Crowe just looking at the the um, the hawk in the tree, the way mm-hmm. he yeah. perceives it is really essential to how you score the the scene. So mm. you need it, to see that there. So what kind of presence was uh, was was Mangold? Is was he an, an ideal director to work with in the studio? He has a great enthusiasm for the 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 whole process, and uh, that makes it really exciting to work for him because he'll um, be open to whatever you're doing you know it's it's not like he has a preconceived notion of the score has to sound like this or whatever he he's he's open to uh a lot of exper- experimentation and and that's uh that makes it uh, uh, the job really interesting do the do the best directors tend to speak in in terms of uh, the feeling that they're trying to capture in a certain moment more more so than the details of this instrument that instrument yeah well I, you know most Directors don't have extensive musical knowledge. Some have some, but um, you know, it it's an abstract language. So they, yeah, I mean, they talk in terms of the scene and emotionally what it's trying to do and and all. Uh, and it's up to the composer to sort of translate that and gauge that in musical terms. But um, yeah, it can be, you know, it, it depending on. You have directors that some directors don't really. That's the hard thing. If they don't really know what it is, what they're trying to achieve musically or in the scene, and um, um, and so they're not sure when they hear it, you know, that that's that's that can be hard. But that wasn't the case on this project. Yeah, I, I hear about it. I hear in the, with the other composers that we interview, it's uh, they they say that you know they they much prefer a director to speak in terms of. How they want a certain scene to feel, then then, then give them the, the directions on you know yeah, this you needs to come in say, here. Yeah, you know I had a once I had a actually a producer and his the director was fired and then the uh, producer came to the uh, to the scoring and you know he had his girlfriend there and she kept saying uh, I don't like the Tiffany you know <laughs> for the uh, for the, the kettle drums are called you know the Tiffany she was calling them the Tiffany. And um, so you know you can get that, and then it's like, how do you deal with that? That's like it's a nightmare. A nightmare. <laughs> so so tell me about your your upcoming projects. You have several several movies on the horizon, don't you? Uh, right now I'm working on um, a movie called The Hurt Locker, um, and um, uh, it's actually a so uh, it's a sort of like an, an Iraq War. Picture, right? Oh, wow. Catherine Bigelow is directing, and um, it's a real I'm... good character piece about these guys that dismantle the roadside bombs. Um, oh, and um, it's something I'm just starting on now. I had another picture that I thought was already going to be scored by now, um, but it's been in delay for a while. I think there's some troubles with the uh, production amongst the production, but um, but it's a uh, a movie for Bertrand Tavernier, uh, who's a uh, wow. he's a wonderful director. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a it's a great piece for music too because it's all set in well, it's based on a James Lee Burke novel. It's a great Neil book. It's a Have you read the book? Very good book. Yeah, um, and uh, so you know, it all takes place in sort of this uh, backwater Louisiana. They're and, a great um, series of books. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. Um, Music, you know, for a composer, it's like a dream to work on a project where you can really go and, uh, you know, I spent this one. I came on early, uh, right when before they even started shooting, and so I spent the uh, better part of a year just going down to to Louisiana, uh, mm-hmm. to the university there, Lafayette, and meeting musicians and working with them and and uh, really getting immersed in Cajun music. And so the score has a lot of Cajun influence to it. Um, cool. So I'm just wow. That we get to. Record it sometime soon because it's all the all the music's pretty much written. And talk about a filmmaker that has tremendous respect for music in, in his. Oh films. yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. That's an example of someone that that is does have 
some musical knowledge and uh, and can actually talk about instruments and all, but yet still has a tremendous respect for the composer and, and would never say uh, you know like a comment like 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 that before. But right. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean he's a tremendous figure. Wow, and I know you've been asked this ad nauseum, but but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, have you been have you been approached yet about Terminator Four? Um, they mentioned it at uh, I had a a meeting recently at Warner Brothers, and they mentioned it. Um, and I'm I'm up for it. I I think they they might they also mentioned that they might want to take a different direction with it. So I I don't know what what's going to happen with that. I mean, if they if it happened, it it could be. It could be a fun project. I, I, um, I really I don't bet know it would be. With action and horror, is there? Do you feel like you're able to kind of let loose as a musician in, in those genres, or are they just the same as any other? I've done so much. It, it's it it comes easily. Like I know I can I can sort of rely on tricks that I know will work really easily. So it in a way it doesn't take as much um, effort. You know, but right. I, I don't know if that's good or not. You know, I it's hard, sort of hard to push myself to do um, to reinvent things. Um, in but uh, um, but you know, having said that, it it, it 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 sort of comes very easily. You know, 20th century music techniques, stuff that I was trained in, just lend themselves really well to horror scores. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so. You know, I I don't know I I but I definitely have ideas about you know doing other types of stuff as well. Well, I know that you years ago you said that you want to work in the Western genre, and that, now that you've done that, is there is there something else that you that you want to do another kind of dream project? Um, well, I still think it'd be fun to do like a more of a like a big epic type of um, orchestral Western because yeah. that, that's um, you know this was more of like a stylized. Thing, but um, I I have ideas for that too. Um, you know, I I think it, it, it's not really dependent so much on the genre of the picture as the the, the picture itself and the, the quality of it and what you get from it and um, whether whatever field it happens to be in. Um, you know, I that's I think that's what's important. Um, 